In this video, we will look at the way that data visualization can be used in class. Data visualization is a way of presenting complex data. For example, it could be um, a, a series of spreadsheets with lots of different data, perhaps country based data in a more accessible way. But not only that, the tool that we're going to be using here called Fusion Tables, which is available as an add on to Google Drive, allows you to visualize large data sets by pulling data in from free web sources. Furthermore, because you can manipulate this data on the fly in class, students can then pull together different variables to produce different charts and interpret the data during the teaching session. So the techniques I'm showing you here apply whether you're using this on your own at your computer or on the tablet because this is a browser based tool. So you'll just need an internet browser or a tablet or any device in order to use this tool. The first thing to do then is to go to Google Drive at drive.google.com and if you're using the browser on the tablet you will need to type this in and actually go to drive.google.com. You can't do this through the Google Drive app. Then within the create icon you'll need to connect more apps in order to install Fusion Table. So to begin your data visualization, from the create icon, select Fusion Table. You're then prompted to either import data from your local machine, or what we will do here is search public data tables. I'm just gonna use the OECD data, and when I click the search icon, it's gonna pull up all the OECD data from a Google Tables search. What I can then do is scroll down and find the piece of data I actually want to use. And if anything catches my eye, I can click export data, which will bring up a sample of the data. And when I've chosen the one I want to use, I click export to fusion tables. You'll then get a prompt on this page, which says it's been successfully exported and you click the open fusion table link. So now what we have is the data that's pulled in in plain text format from the website. Now this means that these values here, which are numbers, are not actually interpreted as numbers. So the next stage is to tell Google what type of data is being contained within each of these fields. So let's start from this side here. We've got a country. We want to change that. So just click the arrow on the right of the country when you hover over it and tell it to be a location type. Click Save Changes. It will reload the table and then do the same for each of the subsequent columns. Hover over the heading, click Change, and then tell it what type of data it is. OK, so I've done five columns of interest here. The next stage is to create the visualization. So I'm going to click the plus icon at the top here, and this will give me some options as to what I can do. The first and most basic one is to add a map. So I'm going to click add map and this will represent all the countries that are comprised in this table. So it does a little bit of what's called geocoding, taking the data that's provided in the column that we've told is a location and trying to work out where in the world that location might be. So we have here uh, now a map that has all the OECD countries indicated with little splodges. Now, there is a way to actually get these to be um, area polygon fields instead. And I'll show you that at the end of this video because it's slightly more complicated. But really, um, that's just a basic uh, visualization. We can do something a little bit more sophisticated using the data itself. So I'm going to click the plus icon and then add chart. And here we've got a scatter plot of our two variables that we've got selected at the bottom is the area and on the left hand side it's the population. We can change this so we can add in extra variables and we can change the bottom variable so we get to see uh, perhaps population versus GDP. We can change the appearance uh, in whatever way we want to and we can change the type of graph that we're presenting. So we can just present it by countries instead, or we could uh, do any other combination of, of, of valid data visualizations. One of the more interesting ones is the network graph, but that's only valid for data where you have uh, relationships. There's, there's, there's many to one or, or one to many relationships or many to many relationships that are, are represented in the data, which isn't relevant for this OECD data.
So you can see really mainly with the scatter graph here how you can um, help to visualize different ideas um, based upon the data that's available and, and selecting data available to, to see uh, what the trends are. Let's go back now to the spreadsheet and what we want to do is perhaps create a heat map which represents um, population by country. So what we need to do is bring in some extra data. At the moment all we have here is the countries as names and we need to actually identify the, the area that they are covered by a set of polygons and polygons are just shapes. So we can do this by merging our current table with a new table. So I'm going to go to File, find a table to merge with and I'm going to search for KML and I'm going to suggest tables matching on country. If I do that search, at the bottom of my list I have world country boundaries where 94% so most of the countries actually have a match. And I'm going to select that and click next. Now what Google will do is try to match uh, the columns available in, in our original table with the columns available in the new table. And not everything is going to be present in, the, uh, in our table in comparison to the new one. That doesn't matter. Once we've chosen which columns are going to match, we're going to click next and then we can click merge will then bring the two tables together once the merge table is created click view table this will load up another google fusion table in our new fusion table a map has already been created uh, based on the geometry detail and if we zoom in we can then start to see the area maps being um, covered we can change the features here so we could have a, a gradient um, type of display so I can I'm going to select there show a gradient based on population and um, we need to set the range to be appropriate for the data we have we might want to add a few more levels in perhaps um, and we can change the colors if we wanted to as well I'm just thinking here that perhaps we just need to change the range to 50 million and click save and that will update um, the colors that appear on the screen on the map based on the ranges that we've specified. So it's actually a really quick way of generating uh, these maps which represent areas and, and, and data that's associated with those areas as well. It just requires a couple of extra steps in addition to just pulling in the data. You need to merge it with KML data which is the data which determines the dimensions of the, uh, the shape that you're representing. Um, i.e. the country boundary um, and then you apply uh, the polygon fill feature style to uh, get your map to be produced. You might not be able to do this in a session, it's quite a complicated process but you could at least provide this data within the session and then ask the students to uh, do subsequent um, analysis on it uh, or interpret the data or, or create extra graphs based on the information you provide within the fusion table. You can then share your prepared fusion table with the students in the usual way using the share button at the top and adding the students names and the tablet names if you're using tablets um, to this form.